Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, August 1st. Man, I can't believe it's August already. The weather sure feels like August. It's uh, it's warm and uh, it's going to be a beautiful day today though. Sunny, uh, but, but a bit on the, the hot side. So today I'm smoking my doodler, um, which is, has been restored by uh, CJP Pipe Rescue. And uh, boy, if you're in the market for an estate pipe, uh, check out Corvette Jim, uh, and I'm going to be talking about him in a moment as well, because what I want to talk about today is pipe racks, and I want to talk about them a bit in general, and then I'm going to do, be doing a build and review of this rack that you can see back behind me here, which is the York Bazaar pipe rack, and I'll tell you the, the story behind that as we get to it. But to begin with, um, in the doodler I've got some haunted bookshop and I want to talk just about pipe racks in general you know it's um early on I had uh, well for the first 20 years of my pipe smoking journey I had uh six pipes and that, that's it and for a lot of the time I had three pipes and for about a year I had one pipe so I didn't need a big pipe rack for a long, long time, uh, and I didn't have one. Um, I'll show you later uh, the, the main pipe rack that I've had for many, many years. Uh, I wasn't very good at storing my pipes. I'm still not very good at storing my pipes. Not that it's bad to store them in any particular way, but I just, I just piled them up. So. <laughs> As you start to build a rotation and, uh, dare I say, build a collection, you're going to want some way to store them appropriately. And, you know, some folks are going to want to put them out of sight and put them in drawers and things like that. And that's fine. You know, you can get a chest of drawers and, and keep them in there. And that's got some real benefits. They, uh, the stems are not going to oxidize because they'll be protected from light. They're out of sight. They might start to smell bad because they're kind of locked in that space. You know, so opening the drawer, you might smell like uh, you've been smoking a pipe for a couple of months in the drawer. But that's okay. You know, if you keep them relatively clean, it, it, it would work. And they're out of sight, which a lot of people like. Uh, not all wives enjoy having pipes prominently displayed throughout the house. I don't think mine does, but she just lets me do it anyway. If you don't want to keep your pipes out of sight in a drawer, you're going to need some kind of a rack. And there's a lot of ways you can go with this. For a long time, what I used, and I'll show you a picture of this towards the end of the video, uh, was I used a simple, you know, antique store find pipe rack, something like this. It's got a humidor in the middle that nobody uses anymore because they don't really keep the tobacco very well. Um, and you, and you got to ring of pipes around it. And there's straight versions of this. There's, uh, I should probably make sure that you can see me around the picture. There's straight versions of this. There's all sorts of things you can. <laughs> I made the pictures too big in this video, so it's going to be a little rough. <laughs> there's all sorts of, of uh, versions of this kind of a rack that you can find in antique stores quite reasonably. And uh, they work great. The problem with them, in my opinion, is they take up a lot of space and they've got limited storage capacity. So, you know, back in the days when I had six pipes, this was great. This was all I needed, and I was a happy man. Uh, nowadays, I gotta, I gotta move on to something different. Now, in addition to these sort of antique store finds, there are folks that are taking antique cabinets of other sorts and repurposing them into pipe rack, uh, pipe cabinets, and. This is one uh, from our friend Corvette Jim, who I mentioned earlier, uh, CJP Pipe Rescue. I'm going to put a link to Jim's channel down below because Jim has been doing some really nice work finding these uh, antique cabinets and restoring them and repurposing them into functional pipe racks that actually hold quite a few pipes. Uh, I think this one is still for sale as of the recording of this video. Uh, so if you're interested, check, check out Corvette Jim. Uh, and again, I'll put a link below in the channel. So that's another option, and you know, if you got the time and, and the, the uh, tools to do it, maybe maybe that would be something you'd want to do. 
And of course there's the homemade route and this can vary greatly from something really simple like like you see here which would be a very functional pipe rack um i've seen my, my there was a video a long time ago i don't know who did it but uh it was titled something like how to make a pipe rack for free and the guy got a cardboard box and he poked holes in it and then he turned his pipes upside down like this and put them in and, and he was happy with that so you know you can you can be creative with it if you're a woodworker, you can make a really beautiful pipe rack. Uh, something I've been planning to do for many, many years and haven't for various reasons. And there's also um, rather expensive racks that you can buy. And we've all seen uh, this sort of rack. Um, these are beautiful. They're functional. They hold a lot of pipes. They're pricey. You know, you're, you're looking at uh, more than $500 for a rack like this. And some of them uh, I've seen go for as much as $900. So beautiful, but you know, you got to be committed to, to spending that kind of money. And of course, there's the approach that I've taken for many years, which is just to sort of pile the pipes up. I mean, I'm embarrassed to say that you'll, you'll see the rack at the end of this where I've taken a picture of it. Uh, all of the pipes that are on the York rack in this final picture were balanced on top of a desktop cigar humidor that, that's in the place where the rack now is. So for many, many years, I've taken this approach. I was a bit neater than the picture here, but you get the idea. Okay. So those are your your options, more or less. And you know, there's a lot of room for creativity and, and variability in, in how the pipes are stored, and that's fine. And I'm not gonna get into the whole debate about whether you should store them stem up or stem down. I don't think it matters. Uh, there's a whole school of thought that if you store them, you have to store them this way, otherwise stuff's gonna, you know, accumulate and, and whatnot. And, and then there's folks that say, well, if you don't store them this way, they're never going to dry out properly. I don't think it matters. Uh, I've stored them both ways and either is fine. So let me relight and talk a bit about this York Bazaar rack. So my friend Mo got in touch with me and a couple of other folks have already done videos on, on this reviewing this pipe rack and they're very good. Um, I know Onion 2AM Pipe on the Patio has done one. I will link to his video down below. There was another one. I'm sorry, I can't remember who did it, but if I can find that, I'll also link to, to that review. Um, and from what I've seen, they've, they've all been favorable. Uh, Mo got in touch and said, could I, could I send you one of these racks and if you like it, you know, do a review. And I thought, oh, Okay, but I, what I told him was, if I don't like it, I'm going to send it back. And if I do like it, because I need pipe racks, I'm probably going to buy a few more. So that seemed like a fair deal. And he was happy with that. Uh, and it turns out I really like it. So I'm going to show it to you here. It is lightweight. This is made from um, a wood called, I, I thought, and as you watch the build video, you'll hear me say that uh, I think this is ash because of some of the cathedral grain pattern in it. But uh, it's actually a wood called Paloena. And Mo tells me that this is a wood that is actually, it's very hard and you can, you, can, you know, it is a very solid hard. It, it does not feel like pine at all. It's, it's much closer to something like oak. It's a very hard wood that uh, is much lighter than oak, so that makes it ideal for this sort of application where you might want to hang it up on the wall. And as you can see, this is not at all heavy. I mean, I'm holding it with just a few fingers. It's, it's light as can be for something this size. Uh, it does come with mounting points on the back, pre-installed, and it comes with the screws to hang it on the wall with uh, drywall anchors. It'd be really simple to put this up on the wall, two screws, uh, just got to measure them out, slide it up, and you're done. It has a very unique design where these three shelves are actually in um, stop dados, so you can remove them, and they slide back in quite easily, assuming you can actually see what you're doing. There we go. So that's nice. And the, the basic design is there's a trough here that the bowl of the pipe rests in. 
and then there's this little um, stem catcher. I don't know what else to call that. That holds the uh, the stem of the pipe. It holds 14, and it comes flat packed, disassembled with all the screws that you need to put it together. It takes four screws to put it together, and I'm going to show you that process uh, in a video that I hope is uh, reasonable. <clears throat> I couldn't get a good camera angle. My shop is too small for, for building something like this, or at least my videoing portion of the shop. Uh, and the audio is probably lousy, but bear with me. It's not very long. Hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back afterwards to talk more about the rack. Okay, this is a rather odd filming angle and not one that I'm used to working with. I generally work with things that are much smaller. Uh, this is actually my normal video area, so hopefully this will work out okay. Anyway, what we got here is a nice cardboard box. Uh, the rack came very nicely packed. I've unpacked it to, to look at it, so the, the packing here is mine. Not It, it was much better packed when I got it. Uh, there are instructions, and we'll look more closely at those in a moment. But you get, I mean, first off, very cool. You actually get a screwdriver. And then we've got the individual parts all very well wrapped in bubble wrap. And again, I've unpacked these and repacked them so they're not as tightly packed as they were when they originally arrived. And get rid of the box. And here we've got all of the necessary screws. Uh, including some for hanging this on the wall, I believe. So, very nice. Okay, let's get rid of the bubble wrap first, and we can take a look at the components here. So the first thing that strikes me is this is actual real wood, uh, very high quality. Um, you know, well made. I am not actually sure what the wood is at this point. I will check and hopefully be able to tell you. It looks ash-like to me in some way, but it's, it's a nice ash. But anyway, if it is, uh, and stained, but lightweight, very solid, real wood. Yeah, that does look like an ash green pattern there. Okay, so what do we got? Now we've got two side pieces, and those are going to hold the, the shelves. Uh, we've got the two, I'm not sure what you call these, the two pipe holding bits that are going to hold the pipe uh, stems. This is a bottom shelf. Top shelf just has just flat, and this would then be the middle shelf. Okay. So assembly is pretty self-evident at this point, but let's look at the instructions just to make sure. And I may have to do this in a separate video that I'll stick in here, but hey, we'll see what, how this looks. Yeah, that's not going to really show up very well. So, there's the bottom and top shelf. They get screwed into the side shelves uh, using screws, as you can see here. Again, those are supplied. And that's really the only assembly. So, the screws have to go into these holes here. So, that is one minor issue where, you know, we are putting screws into end grain, which is not the best way to... Uh, design something like this, but I don't think it's a problem, and I'll explain why as uh, we, we get this assembled. All right, so let's see. We got, let's start with the bottom and the two sides, and then we'll put the top on. So this is, this is the bottom. It's got the trough in it for holding the bottom of your pipe. 
and we want the sides, so we want the trough facing forward, and we want the sides so that these slots are open in the front. Okay, so hopefully that came through clear. The slots are open in the front, they're closed in the back, because we want to be able to slide the shelves in after we're done. So that means we're going to set this up like this. And let's go ahead and get out our screws. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. Does this flip around? I don't know if this is... Give me a moment. Ah, there we go. <laughs> so not only was a screwdriver included, but it is a two-ended screwdriver. So it's got both a Phillips and a flathead end. Just have to pull that central piece out. Alright. i be honest, guys, I would probably use my own screwdriver. But, you know, I want this to be as as much of a build experience for you if you were to just buy this and you didn't have a screwdriver as it would be for me. So there we go. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. This is an extremely awkward angle. The screws are going in quite easily. Huh. going to be out of shot for me finishing up the screws. Sorry, there's just no way I can get this into the shot and be able to properly sink these in. They are pilot drilled all the way down, so there's just no issue at all with screwing them in. This takes time. You could probably use a, uh, a driver on this if you wanted to. You know, a screw gun. Careful not to strip them out. And there we go. So those two are all the way in. And that part is assembled. So we're going to go ahead and do that with the rest of this. Um, I might speed this up. So this is the, the other side, which goes like that. Keeping the geometry straight here is important. Yeah, that's correct. Isn't that correct? I think I've made a terrible mistake. Not a terrible mistake. Let's think through this. So. This is going to be a holding rack. It's going to be another shelf. This is going to be a holding rack. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I, I think I'm doing it right. I think I'm doing it right. We shall see. Because the spacing is not the same here. So if this were to be the bottom, that would be your first of these. And that doesn't seem to make sense. Is that? Oh, you know what? That does make sense. Okay. I put this together upside down. That's entirely my fault. Um, one thing that you should note is that it does have wall hangers on the back. And anybody that thought about it for a minute would realize that the wall hangers need to be at the top of the rack in order to hang it properly. And that's at the bottom. So we'll fix that. Alright folks, so while it very clearly is possible to put this together um, as I began and as it is intended to go together with the uh, little supplied screwdriver, I have decided in the interest of time and my own sanity that I'm going to use a drill driver. Um, a screw gun. Got it set on a low low clutch so hopefully I won't be blowing anything out or stripping anything out here. 
And I don't know what you can and can't see at this point. Let's see where the camera is. Well, you should be able to see some of that. But you don't use a drill. Um, if you don't have a screw gun and you, you put a lot of screws in, get yourself a screw gun. They've got a clutch setting on them. They're, they're much nicer to use. Move this out of the way. Much, much nicer to use and you know really keeps you from stripping out the screws and doing all sorts of nasty stuff. Okay, let's get out of there. Leaving that one a little loose, so that it's easier to find the pilot hole for the second one. I guess that's still just barely in shot, so we're good. don't want to over tighten these since they are into end grain. Now I mentioned that that's probably not a problem with this construction. The reason being, you know, end grain is your weakest place to place a screw. But when this is hanging, all the pressure is going to be on these side supports, um, not on the shelves. So it, it really shouldn't be a problem. Okay, now we just need to do the same thing with the top. We're like four screws away from being done, guys. Believe it or not. This is a show. Oh, I moved this. <laughs> uh, this is this is live entertainment, folks. All right. So can I? There may be a bit of editing. Just not set up for this kind of work, which is fine. Yeah. We try. That seems to be interchangeable. So it's designed to have a little bit of an overhang here, I believe. Let's get two more screws. screws and get two more out. And these go into the bottom holes. Hopefully you could see some of that. And last one. There we go. So with the screw gun, this is honestly like a three minute job to put this together. Uh, and that's it, basically. That, that's the work is done. Now we just need to slide in the shelves. And slide in the shelves, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Now one of the neat things about this is uh, you, can, you can flip these one way or the other. So depending on which way you, you know, if you're, if you're right handed, you might want it this way, I think. I don't know. I haven't actually given it that much thought. But you can. Now these are supposed to slide in here tightly. Oh boy. Maybe they're just a little too tight. Hmm. hmm. There's a difference here, is there? Hmm. Alright, well. Maybe I was wrong. Will this slide in? I thought the whole point was that these could slide in and out, but they're not sliding in and out. Okay, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to loosen up the top. And let's try this 
again, without giving a little bit of flex. I mean, it's well made to the point where the tolerances here are quite tight. Um, I'm not going to be able to get that sucker in there, am I? like tight tolerances, but we need to be able to get the thing together. There we go. Yeah, so... In a pipe. Ignore the fact that this has got some half-smoked onto bookshelf in it. So that's how your pipe's going to rest. Can you see that? Yeah. So if you're right-handed, I think you'd want to be able to come in and pull the pipe to the right. If you're left-handed, that might be more awkward for you, so you could flip this over. So that's kind of a nice feature. Here's the second shelf. Now we're too loose. <laughs> I'm making this a lot harder than it is simply because of the camera being here and the fact that I'm just not really set up to record this sort of work. This may turn out terrible. Uh, may not even wind up getting into the final video. We'll see. Okay, so now I need to find those pilot holes again on the ends here. Should not be very hard and just sink this home now. And that's it. It is a... The racks are... See, now that everything's kind of squared up, I guess it's possible to slide these in and out, and that's fine. I should have just taken the time and squared the carcass up before I tried to put it together. Uh, such is life. It's together now and it is quite nice. Um, I will try this with some other pipes and, and show it to you, but you know, it's it's got real potential, I think. So Okay, hope you uh hope you got something from that. I basically wanted to show that it is very simple to put this together. I mean, it's four screws, and Mo provides a screwdriver, which is great, and it worked fine. I wound up using the screw gun just because I was having some issues. I, I didn't pay attention to the directions at the beginning, as you probably saw. The directions, by the way, are just a single sheet, and they're quite clear. There's two things that I wish would have been stated on this. Uh, the first being that pay attention to the, where the hangers are because they need to be at the top because I put it together upside down originally. It's my fault. I should have thought more about it, but that's something that if it was called out on the this little diagram, that would be really helpful. Just hangers have to be at the top. The other thing, um, and this is something that I should have known, you know, anybody that's done any cabinet work knows that before you finalize a, a carcass, you square it. You, know, you put a square in the corners. You don't have to do that. You can just assemble it, you know, bottom sides, put the shelves in, and then put the top one, and that'll get everything square for you. But there's enough wiggle in those in those screw holes that you could get it slightly out of square, and that's what happened in the video where I had trouble getting the, the shelves in, so I had to loosen the screws on the top in order to get the shelves in. But they slide in and out quite nicely now. Um, so I do have this... Uh, I'm using this now and I took all the pipes off of it to bring it down here to show you this but I will show you some pictures so this is a close-up of some pipes in the rack and it works you know fantastic it holds 14 pipes very very effectively um, 
I did so so this is this these are my artisan pipes and I'll show you the full rack in a minute but the largest artisan pipe the longest pipe I have is my Boswell uh, Bing and that's the third pipe over in this picture and you can see it fits with no problem I tested out a couple of others so this is my shortest pipe this is my near uh, in the same spot that the Boswell was in so that number three spot and it fits in there just fine it's very secure it's not going to go anywhere uh, I put a calabash in. I would not keep a calabash in this rack, but it, and I only have one calabash, but it fits fine. I mean, it's absolutely fine. It kind of overlaps with the next pipe a little bit, so taking the, that next pipe out might be a bit difficult, but, you know, if you got a bunch of calabashes, you probably want a different rack, or you just want to use every other space in this rack, and that would be fine, but it, it, did, it did work out. It, you could keep a calabash in there. Now, a church warden... Uh, I only have one church warden, but it's, it's too long for, for this rack. Um, however, one of the nice things about this pipe rack is that it's very flexible. So you can remove those intermediary shelves. And if you've got a lot of church wardens, you know, if you have seven church wardens, this could be a seven church warden pipe rack. Uh, the other thing that Mo has pointed out is that you could just remove either the top or the bottom um, stem catcher portion and use the top or bottom shelf as a place to store tobacco, for example, lighters, and uh, use the top shelf for a seven pipe rack. So really very, very flexible. So this is what the, uh, the rack looks like in its final uh, condition. Uh, this is on top of a bookshelf that I have. Previously, where this rack is sitting, there was a desktop humidor, and all of the pipes that you see on the rack were sort of lined up on that humidor, alternating and, you know, fit in as much as possible, and then a couple were on tops of others. Uh, this is a much better way. I don't have to worry about them falling off, uh, which really was a possibility with the, with the humidor method, so I'm really glad that I have finally solved that problem. I probably won't keep it here. I think I'm going to probably put it on the wall and uh, I've got some pipes so I'm probably going to buy a few more of these uh, and maybe make a wall you know, display with maybe four of them. Uh, another option is if you're into it you could in theory get a, a piece of like I don't know half inch plywood. Um, maybe furniture grade half inch plywood in, in, in oak for example stain it and you could screw these to it so you could actually make a freestanding unit out of these that has a back if you wanted to uh, really a lot of flexibility now the great thing about this is uh, this is fifty dollars you know it's cheap then that includes shipping it, it, it's very inexpensive it's very well made um, it holds the pipes quite nicely and it can hold a wide range of pipes. So I think this is a fantastic solution. You know, it's more flexible than most of the racks you see. It's modular, so you can add more, more, or, you know, not less, but you could add, you could have two stacked on top of one another. You could, you could have four uh, arranged in whatever pattern. Uh, and I believe that Mo has a discount for if you buy, uh, I think more than two, they're cheaper. And then if you buy more than maybe four they're cheaper I, I don't know the the full scale but he does have a discount program so uh, if you're interested in this please by all means get in touch with him I'm gonna put a link to his website below highly recommend this rack and just for the record what you're seeing here are most of my artisan pipes are in uh, the, the York Bazaar rack uh, you can see there's a few pipes balanced up on top of it as well I need another rack uh, to the right of that is my original pipe rack. That's one that I've had for many, many years. It's one of those types with a glass humidor in the center. Around the outside of that is my seven-day rotation with a few others thrown in the back that I don't smoke very often. And then I'm using the glass humidor to hold what I affectionately call my bouquet of billiards. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's functional, but I can do better. <laughs> And there's other pipes that aren't in this picture. So I hope you, uh, you enjoyed that little overview and hopefully the build video wasn't absolutely terrible. And you know, if you need a pipe rack, check them out.
Again, I'll put the link in the description. Beyond that, folks, uh, it's not not a lot going on here, which is okay. You know, I've been doing a little gardening, uh, been doing some cob modding for my buddy Justin Aldrich, and I'm going to do a cob mod video, uh, making two cob, uh, turning two country gentlemen into two other pipes for him, and I've been videoing the process. It's been a lot of fun. Got time to do this because I'm waiting for some pipes to arrive. They're going to be here on Wednesday, and then I'll be back to work on uh, pipe restorations. So things are moving along. Uh, we're slowly eating away at that, that waiting list. Uh, I think I'm on number 23 now out of uh, 32 is the total number. So I'm getting to you. It's, it's, if you're waiting, I'm, I'm getting to it. And there's a couple guys out there that are waiting for very special stems. They're at the end of the list, and I want to get through all these others. And then I'm going to really take my time with those because there are uh, there's some unique requests that I want to make sure I do a fantastic job on. So we'll see how it goes. I can't tell if this is empty or if I've just got it packed a little too tight at the bottom because I tamped. There we go. That happens sometimes. You overly, you get overly exuberant with your tamping. And I am hoping, not promising, but I'm hoping that I'm going to get some fishing done this week. Uh, this time of year, I like to go out to uh, Valley Creek, which runs through Valley Forge State Park, and I go in the evening. Uh, it's it. You wait until you know things cool off a bit. There's a lot of uh, insect activity in, in the early evening, and uh, you can catch some fish then. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a try. Maybe maybe Wednesday. I don't know. If I do, I'll try to take some video, and uh, we'll see what happens. And if I do, I might do my roadway ramble video on my way to to fishing. So that means it probably wouldn't post until much later in the day, uh, but at least you get to see a different scene as I'm driving. Well guys, with that, I'm going to call this video to a close. I hope you're all having a fantastic Sunday. Looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.